Hello everyone, welcome to the new session of RBI 24-7. My name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to this new session. So guys, in this session, we are going to talk about a new thing which RBI has recently come up with. Now, what is the new thing? That I am going to tell you in a while. But before that, let me ask you to subscribe to our channel. So if this is the first video of our channel that you are watching, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. And apart from that, you can also press this bell icon which is flashing here on the screen. It can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. You can also join our telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now, coming to the topic that I'm going to talk about, right? This topic is one new discussion paper that RBI has come up with regarding NBFCs. So guys, if you remember, we recently did a session in which we talked about uh, the reasons behind the fall of ILFS, Infrastructure Leasing, and, uh, infrastructure Leasing Finance Company financial services right so this was basically an nbf nbfc a non banking financial company which faced some financial difficulties and it led to creation of problems creation of of troubles for almost all the nbfcs active in economy right so ek itni badi company ke girne ke baad ek itni badi company ke failure ke baad baaki sari nbfcs bhi affect hui so rbi thought let's come up with a framework hum kuch aise structure leke aate hain ya ek framework leke aate hain through which we can regulate these non banking financial companies right so we are going to talk about this discussion paper although all these things are proposed as of now nothing is final but we are going to talk about what rbi is thinking to do right okay moving ahead introduction first of all what are nbfcs in simple terms a non banking financial company a company which provides financial services but it is not a bank so basically ek aisi company jo bank ke sare jobs kar rahi hai ya it is performing all the jobs all the functions of a bank uh, be it taking deposits from public or be it providing credit to the public they are doing all the financial services they are providing all the financial services which are performed by banks but they are not banks why are they not banks because they are not registered as banks and that is why they are not regulated by rbi in the way they regulate banks right so that is an nbfc now these nbfcs why do we need nbfcs nbfcs are the important kyun hai economy ke liye because see they are not the competitors of bank rather these support banks they are like the supplement of banks jo banks ko support karti hai bahut sari cheeze karne mein see india is a vast country with so many people living in it so ab agar itni badi country mein hame sab logo ko financial services deni hai we want everyone should have an atm card or everyone uh, should be having a bank account which is linked to their aadhar card so if we want them to become financially literate if we want them to have all the benefits that banks provide then it is very difficult because banks to bahut kam hai desh mein aur abadi itni zyada how are we going to cater to this problem how are we going to tackle this problem handle this problem so in this process of financial inclusion nbfc nbfcs they play an important role they try to support the banks and sometimes they are very niche in their jobs niche in their activities so niche ka matlab kya hai ki ek particular service provide karne mein they are very good for example one nbfc it might be having a, a major job of to provide loans against gold so agar aap unke paas apna sona girvi rakhoge to wo aapko loan de denge so this might be their only job so they are specialized in this they are niche in this right or some nbfcs might be working in certain areas like providing automobile loans or providing real estate loans or uh, providing some sort of personal loans or ye jo specialization hai this can be in terms of uh, territorial jurisdiction also ki some there is an nbfc which is very active in one particular state or in one particular part of india aisa ho sakta hai koi company hai jo southern part of india mein bahut active hai but not northern india mein it does not have that presence so basically nbfcs they supplement banks they uh, they support the banks that is why 
they are very important to the economy because they try to fulfill the gap which banks are unable to because they are so big in size and they have to do so many jobs so nbfcs they can be specialized in certain areas also so that is why coming to the importance of nbfc from the point of view of economy they are vital to the economy support uh, support real economic activity so many small businesses uh, they do not get funding from banks but nbfcs might be able to fund them complement the credit intermediation function of bank as, as i just told you they com they are like the uh, supporters of bank rather than being their competitors play a crucial role in widening access to financial services process of financial inclusion but over the years nbfc sector has undergone a considerable evolution because earlier these companies they used to be small or restricted to one particular area and they were not very big in size but over the years as we saw economic boom and the country it saw economic growth these companies also started growing and they started providing credit providing loans to those areas which were untapped by banks for example one sector like msme sorry micro small medium enterprises so these enterprises they do not have such financial resources and many times banks are unable to provide financial services to them so here also nbfc can play an important role right so basically nbfcs over the years gradually it has seen an evolution it has undergone and undergone an evolution nbfcs ki working mein aur operation mein aur scale mein bahut zyada change aaya hai now if earlier it used to be a small company restricted in one small part of the country then rbi was not much concerned about it but as these nbfcs they have grown rbi needs to regulate them in the way they regulate banks because once uh once uh, one failure or uh, because failure of one nbfc can lead to problems for the entire economy just as it happened with ilfs and after that we saw the the problems which were being faced by india bulls and after that dhfl right so it starts a series of failures that is why we do not want nbfcs to become so powerful that they can, their failure can impact economy in such a destructive way right higher risk appetite so see jab bhi ek company grow karna chahti hai to usko risk lena bahut zaruri hai similar goes for these nbfcs agar ye safe hi play karte rahenge ya fir sirf bahut safe bahut credit worthy customers ko loan dete rahenge then they are not going to grow they need to take risk for growth but see this risk these risks they should be calculated obviously risk taking is important and we are not saying ki aisa nahi hoga ki banks aur nbfcs jis bhi company ko loan dete hain wo fail hone hi nahi चाहिए या फिर दे शुड नॉट लेंड टू दे शुड नॉट लेंड टू नॉन क्रेडिट वर दी बोर्स obviously they are going to make certain loans which are going to fail gradually or which or they are going to lend to certain borrowers who are not going to repay but they should be controlled in the manner that the proportion should be proportion of failures proportion of defaulters should be small in comparison to those loans which turn out to be good right so this control is very important we are not saying that do not take risks because risk is really important for growth that these nbfcs want Want, and it is obviously somehow beneficial for the economy and apart from taking more risks nbfcs they have started to deal in complex products and their interconnectedness has increased because many time many a time these nbfcs they take loans from banks and then they lend to another companies another uh, smaller companies non credit worthy companies so see do you see how they are affected because if one company fails it does not pay back its money or its loan to the nbfc let's say a company hai a limited let's say a a company hai failure limited so failure limited ko ek nbfc jo ki hai money place this nbfc money place limited it has lent money to failure limited now failure limited as it name as its name says it fails and does not pay money back to the nbfc now this nbfc which has taken money from a bank let's say bank of baroda so this bank of baroda when 
this company is not able to pay back to this NBFC, the NBFC won't be able to pay back to the bank. So anyhow, you can see the interconnectedness because they are they are doing the job of intermediary, right? So if one if this company fails, if many companies to which it has lent they turn out like failure limited, they turn out failures, then this is not going to pay back to the banks from which they have taken the loans. So undoubtedly it is going to impact the banking industry as well. Right? So interconnectedness has increased over the time, making these companies, making some of these huge NBFCs systematic, syst systemically significant which can pose potential threat to financial stability in case they fail just like it happened with ILFS. Right? So we need to check if the NBFC is systemically significant or systematically, systemically important. Okay, now RBI has come up with something which is called principle of proportionality. Principle of proportionality. The word proportionality, it comes from the word proportion. Proportion ka matlab hai kisi cheez ko dekh parak ya naap tol ke baat karna, right? Proportion ka matlab hua ek tarikhe se naap tol ya measurement. So principle of proportionality kya kehta hai ki the NBFC which is more systemically important, more systemically significant, uska zyada impact ho sakta hai economy pe, we are going to regulate it more, right? So choti NBFC hai uska bhoat zyada impact nahi hoga in case it fails, then we are not going to waste our regulatory resources on those smaller companies and we are going to apply these resources on bigger companies. Guys, see, there is one major problem with our banking industry that we are not able to let go of our small borrowers who default. For example, let's say a farmer agar loan leta hai ek bank se aur wo default karta hai. Farmer might not, not, might not have taken a big loan. Let's say the farmer has taken a loan of rupees 1 lakh. And if this 1 lakh farmer is unable to pay back to the bank, then these bank officials, they harass the family of farmer for taking their money back, basically the recovery agents of bank. Whereas many big businessmen, many uh, business tycoons, they can they take uh, loans of millions and billions from banks and then they, they declare themselves as, as defaulters. They say that we do not have any money, we have lost the money and now we cannot pay them back. So see the problem, do you see the problem here that someone who has taken a loan of worth 1 lakh, if that person fails to pay back, if that borrower's, uh, borrower fails to pay back, then obviously he is going to be harassed in such a manner that is that is that that would be terrible, right? But if big companies, they run away with money, then no one can do anything because of their influence. Same thing happens here in case of NBFCs. So many times regulators, regulators like RBI, they have tendency to regulate small companies more. Aise chote companies jinke paas bhoat zyada resources nahi hote ya in case by chance agar ye fail bhi ho jayen to bhoat zyada kisi ko farak nahi padta, bhoat zyada economy pe impact nahi aata hai. So many times regulators they have the tendency to regulate small companies more where it, the regulation is not required and they do not, they are unable to control large companies which are systemically important and their failure can impact the economy. So they are many, many times they are unable to control such large companies because of the influence they have, they exert and because of the team of experts, the expert personnel they have, they are able to circumvent the laws. So see the regulatory resources which might be, which might be getting wasted on small companies, they need to be applied on these large companies because their failure is going to impact the economy, not the failure of a small company. So we need to shift our regulatory resources from small companies to large companies. And same goes for NBFC. This is what RBI is saying that the more systemically important an NBFC, the more regulated is it, it is going to be, right? So that we can control its failure, control the impact or mitigate the impact in case it fails. Here you can see 
principle of proportionality expounds that the degree of regulation of a financial entity kisi entity ko kitna regulate karna hai it should be in proportion with the perception of risk the entity poses to financial system jo entity jitna zyada khatra paida kar okay so jo entity jitna zyada khatra paida kar sakti hai economic stability ke liye financial stability se financial stability ke liye usko utna zyada regulate kiya jane ki zarurat hai so this approach will lead to optimum use of regulatory and supervisory supervisory resources right as entities which have more risk which are more uh, harmful or which which pose more threat to the economy they are going to be supervised closely as compared to others so this is principle of proportionality moving ahead okay so now what would be the degree of regulation to a particular nbfc that is going to be decided by certain factors what are these factors there are three factors first one says comprehensive risk perception so jaisa ki humne pehle baat ki that the risk that an entity that a financial a uh, company or an nbfc poses to the economy that is going to be one factor and how are we going to determine that which company is riskier for the economy we are going to look at the parameters such as size leverage leverage means the loans it has taken and from whom they have taken loans loans to liye hain but kis se liye hain so if they have taken loans from banks then obviously uh, their failure might impact the banking industry interconnectedness just as i told you that lending uh, borrowing from one person then lending to another party which has lent to another party so this results in a series of interconnectedness interconnected parties and if one fails it impacts all the other ones so what is the degree of interconnectedness kaun si company kitni zyada interconnected hai it might be possible one company has simply taken a loan and it is using its own resources to extend loans to its clients but there can be some other company which has taken loans from uh, many banks let's say 10 banks some of them can be private some of them can be public some of them can be foreign banks so we have to look at the interconnectedness of the bank after that complexity one nbfc might be dealing in simple products like investment basic investment products or basic uh, mutual funds but one other nbfc might be engaged into dealing in complex products like derivatives or investing money of their clients into some really risky stocks or really risky financial products so what is the complexity what is the kitne uh, difficult level par wo handle kar rahe hain apne clients ka paisa that the regulators are going to look into and what are the supervisory inputs how they are managing the controls are they keeping some sort of risk management system or not right ke wo apne aap mein hi supervise kar rahe hain cheezon ko ya nahi kar rahe that is also a factor to be taken into consideration right so what is the risk that an entity poses to the financial system after that size of operations obviously what what are what is the degree sorry what is the amount of public deposits that an nbfc has taken nbfcs are of different types they might take deposits from uh, from public they might not take deposits from public right so what is the size of operations there might be one nbfc which is having deposits of only let's say 1 lakh people but there can be an, NF an nbfc which might be having 1 crore accounts right so there is difference of size of operation similarly there might be an nbfc jisne sirf 2 uh, crores tak ke loan diye hue hain and there can be another company which has invested some 1000 crores into uh, giving loans to other companies so what is the size of operations what is the size of balance sheet of an nbfc that is going to be second consideration balance sheet size and if this balance sheet size crosses a certain limit then it's going to be regulated in a strict manner regulated at a higher pedestal and the third factor is activities of nbfcs as i told you that nbfcs they are working into different areas so what is the area what what is the scope of activities undertaken by nbfcs so as you can see here 
There are many NBFCs which are unlikely to pose any systematic systemic risk on the account of their activities. हो सकता है एक NBFC है that does not take that does not accept deposits from public but providing some sort of really basic and simple services to uh, its clients. So in that case. There is not much scope for activities. There is not much scope for risks. But an NBFC which takes uh, deposits from public, accepts deposits from public, and is sitting on a huge number of account holders, then it might be really risky. So activities. One NBFC might be dealing in simple insurance products or investment products like mutual funds. हो सकता है बाकी deal कर रहे हैं. इंटरनेशनल स्टॉक्स में और जंक बॉन्ड्स में या फिर लेट्स से सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक डेरिवेटिव्स और प्रोवाइडिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स इंश्योरेंस प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक यूलिप्स राइट सो दे कैन बी डिफ व्हाट आर दी एक्टिविटीज जो एक एनबीएफसी परफॉर्म कर रहा है सो दीज आर दी ट्रिगरिंग फैक्टर्स मूविंग अहेड here you can see the scale based framework which rbi has come up with so rbi kya keh raha hai simply it has said that we are going to divide all the nbfcs into four major categories what are these categories first of all guys let's learn about them and then we can come back to the diagram here you can see bottom of the pyramid so bottom of the pyramid is for the base layer or is for the simple nbfcs which are not having much impact on the economy as you can say as you can see here bottom of pyramid that is base layer basically they have put these four categories into depiction by a pyramid where least regulatory invent intervention so ye bahut hi seedhe saadhe se एनबीएफसीज uh, हैं ज्यादा कोई भी दे आर नॉट इन टू समी थिंग्स और ट्रिकी एक्टिविटीज दैट इज वाई वी डू नॉट वी डू नॉट नीड टू मॉनिटर दैम मोर राइट अगर एक क्लास में कोई टीचर नोज दैट सर्टन ग्रुप ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स दे आर वेरी स्टूडियस एंड दे आर नॉट नॉट ई एट ऑल दैट इज वाई दे नो दैट दे डू नॉट हैव टू शाउट ऑन देम दे डू नॉट हैव टू पुश देम टू स्टडी बिकॉज दे नो दैट दो स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू स्टडी देम सेल्स राइट सिमिलर गोज फॉर दीज nbfcs these are simple ones and they and uh, they do not pose any risk whereas some others naughty kids might pose a threat to class because agar kuch aise naughty bachcho ko class mein control na kiya jaye to wo puri class mein hurdang macha sakte hain so that is why you need to put your resources or you need to divert your efforts divert your resources towards the naughtier kids of the lot that we are going to talk about so these are good kids okay so non systemically important nbfcs nbfcs jo ki p2p mein kaam karte hain peer to peer lending karwate hain right so this is not much risk uh, the, there is not much risk involved because they are simply not being engaged themselves but they are uh, providing a platform for lenders and borrowers to contact each other same goes for account aggregator platforms which are just providing a database we have discussed the meaning of account aggregators non operating financial holding companies this has also been discussed in one of the previous session and type 1 nbfcs they do not accept deposits from public that is why do not pose much risk to economy after that coming to the next layer that consists of nbfcs currently classified as systemically important so now coming to one level higher of naughty kids jo they pose some sort of risk to the uh, to the whole lot so iske andar kon kon se nbfcs aayenge nbfcs systemically important which are non deposit accepting or deposit taking nbfcs nbfc d here you can see d stands for deposit taking nd means non deposit taking and si means systemically important housing finance companies see these companies these are into real estate and obviously if they are into real estate providing loans to people so that they can buy houses obviously this is not going to be on a small scale because uh, these loans are of huge amount so hfcs come in this category after that ifcs infrastructure finance companies after that infrastructure development funds so both of them they provide funding for Uh, construction of infrastructure like dams or buildings so huge amount of investment after that stand alone primary dealers 
and core investment companies core investment companies also been discussed earlier okay so this is second layer okay second layer of degree of regulation as you can see here first one is nbfc bl that means base layer nbfc ml that means middle layer so equivalent to nbfcs which are non deposit taking with a threshold of 1000 crore after that middle layer equivalent to nbfcs which we just talked about which are systemically important arbitrage is plugged see many nbfcs the here they were having some benefits because they were performing the job of banks but they were not regulated as banks are regulated so if rbi is going to regulate them in a strict manner basically more strict than their uh, than their lower level counterparts then obviously the regulatory arbitrage which was there in running an nbfc because aapko pata hai ki agar hum nbfc chalayenge to bank jitna regulation to hoga nahi but now you know that this group is going to be regulated more than this group that is why this arbitrage is fixed or it is plucked no scope of arbitrage right so these are two layers coming to the other two layers going further into the next layer the upper layer the uh, the more naughty uh, the naughtier kids of the lot consist of nbfcs which are identified as systemically significant among nbfcs for identification of entities to be categorized here in the upper layer ul means upper layer parametric analysis will be carried out comprising quantitative and qualitative parameters so yahan par kya kiya jayega ek tarike se aap samjho ki test liya jayega so we were talking about the four layers right so these ones the bottom ones ab ye jo hain ye class ke sabse good students hain that is why inse koi khatra nahi hai teacher ko now coming to the middle layer so these are the kids which are popular for being naughty but they might or might not do some Uh, some okay so these are the students who are popular for being naughty in the class but ho sakta hai ki ye kuch masti kare in class mein ya nahi kare you do not know right so but you need to keep an eye on them because you know that they might do some sort of wrong doings in class and the teacher needs to monitor it now coming to the upper layer nbfcs these upper layer nbfcs inko test kiya jayega so basically we are trying to find out we are going to rate the students of the class on the basis of certain parameters and then we are going to identify the naughtiest of them right so ab inme se bhi jo aapko pata hai aap unko test kar rahe ho students ko ki इन सर्टन पैरामीटर्स पर ये जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं ये सबसे ज्यादा रैंक कर रहे हैं या फिर इनके मार्क्स सबसे कम आते हैं और नोटिनेस लेवल सबसे हाई है तो बेसिकली यू आर ट्राइंग टू टेस्ट देम और यू आर ट्राइंग टू जज देम ऑन दी बेसिस ऑफ सर्टन पैरामीटर्स सो दे आर दी नोटिस्ट ऑफ द लॉट ओके सो दीज आर दी इनको रेगुलेट किया जाएगा बैंक की तरह सो बैंक लाइक रेगुलेशन तो so, ये जो है वो लिमिट को ब्रीच कर चुके हैं और लेट से टीचर ने एक लिमिट लगा दिया कि जिसके 60 परसेंट से कम आएंगे मार्क्स में दैट दैट स्टूडेंट इज गोइंग टू बी पुट इनटू दिस लेयर राइट सो दिस इज अ लेयर व्हिच इज बीइंग डेटरमाइंड और व्हिच इज बीइंग डेटरमाइंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सम कैलकुलेशन दिस वॉज जस्ट टू पुट सर्टन किड्स जस्ट टू आइडेंटिफाई दैट देर आर 10 गुड्स 10 गुड किड्स इन द क्लास सो रेस्ट 40 आर इनटू दिस कैटेगरी अब इस 40 में से भी यू नो दैट 60% ऑफ देम राइट दैट मींस 24 आर हियर बिकॉज़ दे आर नॉट गेटिंग दिस मच ऑफ दे आर नॉट गेटिंग दिस मच ऑफ मार्क्स राइट सो दिस इज जस्ट एन एग्जांपल मूविंग अहेड ओके गोइंग फर्दर नेक्स्ट लेयर the upper layer consists of nbfcs identify okay now certain parameters are there on the basis of quantitative and qualitative so quantitative teacher marks ke base pe identify kar raha hai and qualitative certain behavioral aspects ke base pe bhi identify kiya ja raha hai naughtiest kids ko so this layer will be populated by nbfcs which have large potential for systemic spillover 
of risks. So if these companies fail, then they are going to impact the entire system and have the ability to impact financial stability, right? So the, the certain parameters which will be uh, in place to identify this upper layer, we are going to talk about them in a while. Now coming to the next ones or the last ones, now this last layer, what is it? In this layer, they, these are the top ones. यहाँ पे सिर्फ उन NBFCs को डाला जाएगा। तो यहाँ पे तो हमने जो ब्रीच कर रहे हैं लिमिट्स को, जो उस पर्टिकुलर कटऑफ के को क्रॉस कर रहे हैं, उनको डाल रहे हैं। But here we are going to put those NBFCs which uh, out of that lot which are known that in me to pakka kuch garbad hai ya fir uh, ye totally bohut zyada risk me hai and then they need some special circumstance they need some special laws they need some special packages reform packages so they are going to be put here this will remain empty yahan pe permanently kisi ko nahi dala ja raha but once we identify a really big problem in one company we are going to put them here, unless supervisors take a view on specific NBFC, so in number बहुत कम होगा, जो कि बहुत ज़्यादा problem में है. Here we are just going to talk about those uh, which are breaching certain parameters. But here, the ones who are deep under the under the water and who, can, who is act, and those companies which are actually into really uh, which are actually into too much financial trouble, right? So these are the four layers. So here you can see this is going to be empty unless and until supervisors think so. Here you can see the classification of companies on the basis of three parameters, size ke base per, scale ke base per, scale of significance and activity. So activity ke base per this is going to be the classification of base layer and the middle layer. And this is going to be the upper layer. Here you can see that to identify these are certain parameters on which they are going to be evaluated and the weightage given to a certain factor, 35% to the size and similarly the rest. Top 10 to be included in any case, at least 10 are going to be in this upper layer. And if they are not uh, breaching any limits, then they are going to be in the middle layer. Methodology to, uh, so methodology to identify the upper layers one. So we have talked about that the third layer, the upper layer, is, to identify them, there are going to be certain quantitative and qualitative parameters. So quantitative, ko, the weight is going to be 70% and 30% to qualitative parameters. Guys, if you want to look at these parameters, you can have a look here on these classifications. I hope these are readable. Okay, sort of readable. I am going to zoom it once so that you can have a look more here, right? Okay, this is readable. So these are certain parameters. Okay, and these are the qualitative parameters. Let's zoom kar lete hain. Okay, so these are the parameters. So this is the weightage given to 70% to quantitative and 30% to qualitative. So this is the scale based framework that RBI has come up with. So guys, I hope you found this session beneficial and now you know that what is the scale based framework that RBI is thinking to bring. Just a discussion paper now, but I thought uh, this is something that you guys should be aware of. So guys, if you found this session beneficial, then do not forget to hit the like button because I will be having a next session in which we are going to discuss some new things. Till then, you guys take care of yourself and thank you for being here.